Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kiersey, for, for taking the time to talk to Black Girl Nerds. Really appreciate you. Always love watching your work on the screen. And I absolutely love this film. I actually saw this during TIFF. So it was so cute, so quirky. Susie's a Black Girl Nerd, I feel. <laughs> she is. <laughs> thank you. And yeah, she is very much that. Yeah. And and Susie is a very inquisitive person. Uh, do you think that she uses podcasting as a way to apply her skills? And why do you think she uses that medium? Yeah, I think that podcasting for her kind of, I feel like something that she feels gets in her way is the way that she's perceived, how she looks. Um, because she does have the option to make YouTube videos, right? But she chooses podcasting. And I think she feels safety there. Can you hear drilling in the background? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, this is either going to go smooth or go really, really bad. But yeah, she gets to hide behind a microphone um, versus people not really respecting her or hearing what she has to say uh, because she's aware of what she looks like. She understands that people find her braces to be funny. Um, but she likes herself. She likes her clothes. <laughs> I feel like when she was younger, she probably got picked on um, for her, the clothes that she was wearing. But something that me and Sophie, the director that we went over was we wanted Susie to dress in a way that was a reflection of what's important to her and her mother is sick and not going to be here much longer and so she wears a lot of her mom's hand-me-downs that's really loud I know that you hear that I don't hear it are you it's serious <laughs> yeah. I don't hear anything either you're you're good you're good um <laughs> But yeah, everything about her, we didn't want anything about what she looks like to just come from a, like, with no intention, right? For yeah. it to feel like, oh, they just wanted her to look like an outcast. Um, it's more so that she's this confident person and has always wanted braces. She doesn't care how old she is. We didn't want it to be that part of the mystery is motivated by her looking a certain way. Um but yeah, I think the podcasting protects her, protects the way that she's perceived. I think she's conscious of it. You know, the um, the true crime genre has become really popular in recent years. Why do you think so many people are attracted to this form of storytelling? I mean... I'm attracted to it in the movie that we made, <laughs> a movie <laughs> about a true crime podcast. But honestly, I find that a lot of times the way that these podcasters cover true crime can be a bit insensitive. Mm. Um, and it can start to feel as if you're making something really awful that happened to someone making it funny or entertainment. Um, and Susie doesn't do that. She's laying out the facts and there are podcasts that lay out the facts um, versus, you know, you and your two friends talking about the drama surrounding someone's gruesome and awful death in a way that you find to be entertaining it's so odd that that's how people pass time true yeah. crime podcasts scare me I don't know about <laughs> you but like I'm not gonna sleep at night yeah yeah I I can't watch a lot of the true crime stuff that's out there it's it's not my cup of tea but I like the way um your character Susie in this film short sort of tells her way of doing these sort of investigative stories 
Um, when you are preparing for this role, because like I mentioned before, she has these really great investigative skills. Did you dive into any subtext with her character? Meaning, did you look into other characters that Susie would have admired or had been inspired by in order to prep for this role? Oh, that's a really good question. I think I completely isolated Susie from the rest of the world. I didn't grab, well, I don't want to say grab as if that's what other actors do. I didn't really take from um, any other, I wasn't necessarily inspired by any other characters in a film or a play or anything, which is so weird to say now that I'm saying it out loud. But I remember Sophie and I, Sophie, the direct director, even if we would start to kind of have like a, a reference, we would be like, not too much now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to, to reel it in so that uh, Susie doesn't become this character of a person. Um, and maybe subconsciously, I knew she's different than any other person that I've ever met, that anyone else has ever met. So maybe intentionally I birthed her without any type of um, outside inspiration, which sounds so not, now that I'm saying it out loud, sounds so like not what an actor is supposed to do, but I guess it's what I did. <laughs> well, that just- There was a trace of like- like there, <laughs> there were like, there were some references, but it was more so reference in, in tone of the movie, you know, mm -hmm. it, it was, it was more that than about Susie, I think. Well, I mean, it, it's so organic and so authentic, and it's also just a testament to your skills as an actor that you were able to isolate the character in that way. So I I really appreciate that it was just this very wholesome and refreshing organic performance. Um, you mentioned mm -hmm. Sophie Cargman, the director. I, I want to read this quote that she had said about the film. She says that it's a cautionary tale about our society's current fixation with insta celebrity and how it can even damage good people with positive intentions that's her overall summation of the film what are your thoughts about that hmm <laughs> i think that good people with good intentions when you are a human thrown into a position where there are so many people surrounding you and looking at you and listening to you. Um, influencer or just celebrity who's a musician or athlete or whatever it may be. I feel like for humans, it's so unnatural for us um, that once you start receiving that kind of attention, we start to go to a place that, again, is so not anything that our minds can conceptualize. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't, we can't, we can't expect humans who end up in a position of celebrity or even authority to not get their mind, their minds to not somehow warp a little bit. And it maybe isn't always for the worst. Um, I don't want to generalize celebrity. Um, but again, like with Susie, the separation of the podcast, I think that with influencers, there's also a separation. Um, maybe it doesn't affect their human because maybe they've completely created a whole other face for themselves. <laughs> And that's a disassociation. <laughs> Maybe that's where uh, uh, actions that are looked down upon come into play. Maybe it's the dis disassociation of it all. Um, but yeah, I don't know much about the world of 
I'm just like Susie. I don't know much about the world of influencer. I mean, I see it. I'm obviously a part of the world. Um, <laughs> right. Like I've gone online and Instagram and TikTok and all of that. Um, I personally don't know anyone who's an influencer. And I feel like that's the only way you can really have insight. Indeed. Indeed. You know? Yep. Yep. I agree. I, you know, one of the things that I find interesting about Susie is that she's a really complex character because she does have good intentions. And I definitely don't want to spoil anything uh, by asking this question, but some of her intentions kind of blur the lines of ethics and morals uh, throughout this, this narrative. So what aspect of Susie's character do you respect and what aspect of her character do you condemn? That's a hard question because I have to understand and believe and make sense of every action <laughs> any any person on the page that I'm supposed to bring to life, even if they're doing something that I completely disagree with, I have to make sense of it. Um, God, I empathize with her so much. I'm also, let's be clear. <laughs> <laughs> I do not condone. Um, she rationalizes the way that she's brought someone else. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's never good. And we all will cause someone some type of pain, you know, at some point in our lives. Um, but when it's at our own benefit, benefit is when I start to feel like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's not causing someone pain accidentally. You know, they didn't get caught in the crossfire. Right. It's like praying um, on a little animal. Um, I do respect her. I respect her commitment to her mom and I think that that comes from a genuine place of holding on to kind of the only person who sees her and loves her and her desperation for wanting to fulfill this destiny that her mom has set up for her um yeah I respect that even though it leads to things that I don't respect. I do respect that. The love for her mom. Um, yeah. 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 I um, I love the deliberate use of color in this film. And even looking mm -hmm. at your top, there's some... <laughs> <clears throat> there, there's some similar colors because the the color blue we see that prominently in the the film. Uh, did you have a hand at all in some of the use of color with the wardrobe choices or the color? What role did you was, play in that? Yeah, the color was all Sophie and so intentional. Like yeah. her and we're both really into color theory and love the satisfaction of every single color in the frame in the shot complementing each other whether it is the blue sky and the green trees you know and I know that she wanted to mostly incorporate jewel tones um but Sophie she has this crazy binder with like every shot it's not even just <laughs> it's <laughs> It's for each line, even exactly the frame that she wants and every color that she wants to see from like my sweater um, to my backpack to what that looks like next to Jesse's sweater and his backpack. Um, everything was so, so intentional and it's mostly in Sophie's crazy mind. But it's appreciated. We all see it. We don't realize maybe sometimes how much we appreciate it until you see it on screen. Yeah, it it's so good. I love it. It adds a nice whimsical quirkiness to the film. So I, I love it when right? filmmakers, 
Yeah. I feel like it's fittings and it'll be about um oh you look great in this this color as Kiersey, right? Mm -hmm. That's I mean there was that conversation of Sophie uh recognizing it was really interesting to watch her learn the colors that complement my skin tone because we don't have the same skin tone <laughs> like this is so exciting <laughs> there are so many other colors that you get to wear that I can't <laughs> um but yeah once you I don't even know what I was saying but yeah once you once you get past just that thought which is oh this actor looks good in this color yes that's satisfying on screen but what's even more satisfying is when the whole world within the shot can everything can complement each other and it takes brain power um yeah. for sure to try to match the color of the sky and the leaves and yeah the lockers in the school the background actors i mean it's a lot it's worth it. That well, that aqua blue shade looked great on you. So I, I thank you. It. I don't know if it, if it's called aqua blue or if there's like a special something like that. Called, I would call it aqua blue. <laughs> it was great. Uh, I know we got to wrap soon, but I did want to ask this question because I know that you were in the podcast space yourself. Um, so do you plan on continuing that journey into podcasting? Uh, with other projects or well, what's going hmm. on with that? That's a really good question. I think that a lot of us want to start our own podcasts and then we're like, everybody has a podcast and who wants to listen to me talk? Oh, <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> realizing, <Not true. laughs> right. Also, we say that when we all listen to podcasts, um, yeah. I just don't feel like, I don't know. I feel like when I speak, maybe I ramble too much and I say so many things that I don't mean. <laughs> I have no business. I will speak. I will not. Most people will like form a thought and then speak. And I really mess myself up by speaking as I'm forming the thought. And then I'm like, ah, this isn't where I wanted. I wanted to land somewhere. And now we just got off this blabbering. I feel like I'd be a terrible podcaster. But maybe I like being on people's podcasts and being led by them. That's much more enjoyable for me. Well, I absolutely love Susie searches. I love the mm -hmm. fact that you're going into different areas of entertainment. Keep up with the podcasting. I think people would love to hear you speak. Don't Thank say you. that people don't want to hear you talk. <laughs> it's, it's it's absolutely not true. We do want to hear you. And oh, um, thank you. Keep doing like the the lead, the quirky indie films because every time I see you right. in independent stuff, I just love it. I I love seeing thank you. you really just sort of you know kind of offbeat you know indie films that are different unique so yeah, yeah keep I love it that. yeah thank you thank, thank you so you, much Kiersey. appreciate your time take thank care you. bye bye-bye Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.